Hello everybody, uh, it is Michael Pierce here. Um, excuse me, yes, this is another vlog, I apologize for that. Um, well, it's not a normal vlog because I have a script here that I've written, but um, for various reasons I didn't feel like it was appropriate to make it into a full-fledged video with the pictures and everything because uh, that would take away time from the ESFJ video that I'm making and also because I felt like I need to get this out here and also because it is a essentially a reply to a video that I'll get into in a moment excuse me recently released that is um, it's not a video with pictures it's it's a talking video like this sort of informal and so on if I'm replying to it then I figured that I would take on a similar-ish style um, so I'll, I'll just get into it for now. And um, So a video was recently released by a successful YouTube uh, young enth enthusiast. Uh, the channel name is INTJ. So he deleted all of his channel content as well as content on his website, intjs.org, except for this recent video, which provides the explanation for this radical move of his. The video is entitled INTJ Personality Dissents, MBTI, Carl Jung, and Enneagram Dark Side. Uh, he provides a helpful summation of his points in the description of the video, and I'll go ahead and quote those here because it's a, it's a good starting off point. Um, INTJ exposes the dark side of MBTI, Carl Jung, and the Enneagram, and explains why he left typology, I want to thank all of you for watching, but I have decided to delete all of my videos and articles for three main reasons, which I explain in detail in the video. One, I no longer accept the accuracy of typology. Two, I believe that typology corrupts people. And three, there is a hidden dark side to it, dot dot dot. For the resources I mentioned in the video, please visit the link below so you can see his video in the description for, for that. Um, thank you all for watching, and may God bless you. Uh, so, the reason this video is of interest to me, and I originally wasn't going to say anything about it, because I generally don't, but I thought it was important because um, he's a fairly popular, or he was a fairly popular channel. I, I don't know what the subscriber count is now that he he's said he's not making any vid more videos, although he did make a, um, a follow-up video just today uh, uh, to, to the final video that he put out. Um, in any case, I'm interested in it because he does address um, pretty succinctly sort of some of the main criticisms and concerns and things that have been brought against what I guess I'll call the typological community. Um, so it's, it's representative of many complaints I've heard over the years, and I think it would be worth my time to create a response to this video's complaints about typology and um, just, just to get another voice out there, um, just to get uh, 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 counterpoints to what he says. Um, so, excuse me. Um, I'm going to be going through and uh, essentially addressing those three main points that he makes um, and what he says in the video. Um, you can go to his video and watch it for yourself. Um, by all means, I encourage you to do that. Uh, though, if you really like typology, it'll probably make you angry. <laughs> he is not exactly... Uh, well, any, anyway. He, I'm trying to make this professional and uh, I'm trying to take all of his points out of any um, ad hominem or anything like that just to address them on their own terms. So, Point number one, I no longer accept the accuracy of typology. So this is probably, this is probably the most common thing that's brought against it. And so first of all, scientific studies have denounced uh, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, not Jungian typology as a whole. They can't denounce Jungian typology as a whole because as, as channel INTJ himself points out, it isn't a whole. It isn't a consistent system. 
It's a community of related but arguing ideas. There are thousands of resources, this included, all saying subtly or radically different things from each other. They can't be debunked as a whole. They could only be debunked individually according to their different claims. You might as well say that psychology as a whole is flawed because a particular popular instrument once championed within it is shown to have flaws. Most of the typology community doesn't even like the MBTI. Quite a few denounce it far more harshly than the researchers themselves. And so they should be quite celebratory that the MBTI is shown to be a flawed instrument because it may actually indicate that their own conception of things is closer to the truth. And insofar as the ideas presented on my channel make no claim to be representing the beliefs of the Myers-Briggs company, I do not see what research into the company's instrument has to do with me, nor what an article that does not reference and quote me directly and my ideas directly, what that has to do with me. The word typology and typology community designates a family resemblance of ideas and resources, just as philosophy designates a family resemblance of multiple thinkers who all argue with each other. We'll prop this here. Who all argue with each other, and but still are all kind of designated within that area of philosophy as a whole. You have to refute every philosopher and every typologist individually according to what they in individually propose. And along the way, you'll probably find typologists and philosophers who you actually agree with. Anyway, so, however, you can, I guess, refute the MBTI insofar as the MBTI uh, makes explicit predictions about the external world that are designed to be tested and evaluated and possibly refuted. I personally, however, have always avoided making those kinds of specific predictions because, as I've said before, my theories are not behaviorist but cognitive. They are concerned with thought processes that can manifest in a wide variety of external behaviors and cannot be relied on to manifest the same way all the time or in every person in a way that you can clearly and reliably measure it in that way. So as such, empirical science cannot validate it because there is nothing external for it to confirm. So it's a huge weakness on my point. Don't get me wrong. Um, it would be a lot strengthened if, if I could make external claims, but at the same time, that's precisely what a lot of people really complain about. They don't want a personality system to make, or even a psychology for that matter, to make ex explicit external claims, because that takes away from their agency and accountability, um, which is another thing that INTJ's video points out. Um, but I address that later in the video. I don't really like how he puts it. Um, anyway, the point being uh, that yes, it's it's a weakness on my part. It means that the only confirmation that you can have, as far as I can tell, for the things that I say most of the time is ultimately subjective. Um, it's not objective in the sense that empirical science is, because you're not detecting it in this measurable way that cannot be denied that that's occurring. It has to be detected via your intuition, via you yourself. Um, which has a whole a whole potential host of problems that can come with it, as anybody kind of involved in the community knows. Um, people not being sure of their type and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I think that that's the only way you can do it in an area that is concerned with what's going on inside a person's subjective experience. I am concerned with describing structures that can be seen and recognized by another thinking subject, not a machine necessarily. They are too human, these structures. Empirical science has every right to call me a crackpot for that, but um, you can't give me a yellow card if I'm playing rugby and you're playing football. Um, you can think that rugby is a dumb sport for some reason, um, but they're two different games. We're playing different games. Um, well, I don't know. I also think that it's interesting that often the two complaints are coupled together that... Um, MBTI shouldn't be, or not MBTI, but just any typology group in general, shouldn't be telling me what it is that I will do, which they don't, or they shouldn't, 
um, that's correct. You shouldn't be telling them what to do. But then they also will say, also, it's not empirically validated. So essentially what you're saying is that you shouldn't be doing it, and also you can't be doing it. Um, which isn't a contradiction, but it just, I don't know. It's like, if you can't do it, then it doesn't matter if you shouldn't do it or not, because that's irrelevant at that point. And if you can do it, then you can talk about whether you shouldn't do it. But if you shouldn't do it, then you shouldn't even be asking if you can do it. Sorry, that's a that's an unrelated aside. That's not a very, I don't, it's not a good argument. Um, so, interestingly, uh, going on the earlier point about empirical science, Isabel Myers, if you read Gifts Differing, um, she talks about the cognitive functions. She, I guess you could say, believes in the cognitive functions or thinks that they're useful concepts. Uh, but she recognized that they were too elusive to detect reliably, which is why she extrapolated the four dichotomies and tests those instead. <laughs> she doesn't test for the eight cognitive functions, even though she says that that's what Jung talked about. Um, the four dichotomies... Uh, because those eight functions are recognized to be too elusive, they're not going to produce reliable enough results, but can we extrapolate these four dichotomies that have enough links going between them and these eight cognitive functions that if we see these four dichotomies line up in a certain way, then that will therefore mean these eight functions are there. Um, so that's kind of the idea. But if those indicators are shown, if those strings tying back to the eight functions are shown not to be sufficiently reliable, then this only means that those four dichotomies are not the best means for measuring that underlying theory. Uh, it doesn't mean that the eight cogn it doesn't say anything about the eight cognitive functions, because yeah, I'll get to that in a moment. You can argue, as many typologists do, that those four dichotomies, by that I mean extroverted, introverted, sensation, intuition, thinking, feeling, judging, perceiving, that those aren't the best means for testing, if, if you can test at all, for those eight cognitive functions. By the way, this has all been assuming so far that the MBTI is, as is often said, completely meaningless. On the contrary, and Celebrity Types has written several very good articles on this, it has been tested and it's been shown repeatedly to have acceptable validity. In other words, it's not great, but the popular propaganda that it is meaningless or useless or, as INTJ says, complete garbage. <laughs> Sorry. Ironically, to say that it is complete garbage is not very scientific. To say it's meaningless is not very scientific. Celebrity Types has already talked about this, by the way. They made very good points. Um, it's not very scientific. Also, it's just plain absurd. Science cannot say that something is completely meaningless, even if it is, uh, just for the sake of argument, because either the thing refuses to give science something objective that they can test in the first place, in which case technically science can't say anything on the matter, or you can test it, it does make such predictions, but it, it, it registers as it doesn't register very high on the measurements, but it's still registering something, even if it's just by coincidence. Um, but the scientific inquiry couldn't say that. The scientific inquiry would have to simply say, and let you draw your own judgment, that it was coincidence, but it would have to say it only measured so high in what we saw, and maybe that's due to coincidence, but we don't know as far as science is concerned. Our intuition might be able to tell us looking at it. I'm just referring to intuition in the typical sense, not in the MBTI sense. We might be able to synthesize what this means, but that's not what the science is actually saying. Maybe that's not the best argument, but I'll, I don't know. Um, I, I'm leaving comments open on this video. Please just go, go crazy. Let me know what doesn't work and read those comments, because I don't want to mislead people, but this is just... This is just how I think, and this is what I've written out, and this is what I'm thinking. So, uh, you know, I've always said, don't just be careful, because I might be wrong, but um, this... Anyway, um, I might be wrong on an individual point. 
I don't think it you can say that I'm wrong on everything, especially anyway. I don't know. I'm I I've already I've already been trying I've already been trying to do like two or three takes of this and uh I'm refusing to turn off the camera now because it'll take me forever if I keep on stopping myself because I don't feel like it's perfect. Um so now moving on the MBTI's degree of validity as I understand the matter comes in large part because its dichotomies correlate with traits on the celebrated Big Five test. The most obvious of these would be the trait extroversion, the Big Five test, which all the psychologists love, Jordan Peterson being one of them. Um, everybody loves that. It has a trait called extroversion that it's measuring for. The MBTI also has a trait called extroversion that it's measuring for. Maybe they have different definitions, but they're using the same concept, and the concept originally came from Jung. So, if the Myers-Briggs type indicator is completely meaningless, meaning that type, the trait of extroversion must be completely meaningless, um, and anything really, it's that much, it's a black hole of reliability somehow, then that not only should mean that no one should be getting consistent results on the MBTI test ever, but also that the big five traits should likewise show up as deeply flawed, but they don't. Everybody loves the big five. The big five is like perfect for empirical science. Like I used to be kind of annoyed by it, which was really, you know, that's just only because I felt threatened or whatever, because I'm like, no, I want my MBTI to be safe over here. And it's like, there's this big five test and they're all like, this is so much better than the MBTI. But you know, you look at the big five and it's like, you know what, this is, this is, this is what you're going for. This is perfect for empirical science. This is what, anyway, I don't know. I, I'm still figuring that part out, but I'm getting off track again. The point is that insofar as there's this correlation, basically the MBTI is kind of piggybacking to a certain degree off of the big five in terms of its reliability. So if you like the big five, then you should like the MBTI to a certain degree also. At the very least, uh, you can conclude that the MBTI is a worthy and valuable predecessor to the big five. And it deserves respect, if anything, just because it pioneered and made popular the testing of trait extroversion. To continually disparage it, be, excuse me, to continually disparage it because one didn't like being tested in work or feels it led one astray in picking a career or is just simply annoyed with the attitude of people who swear by it is the height of resentment, I think. Um, in fact, and I'm moving into, sorry, I'm moving into a part of kind of my argument that I don't think it's the best, but I'm going to bring it out anyway because it, it's much more of um, just what I feel like I've seen from my end of things, and um, but I don't I don't feel like it's it's as strong as what I think I've given so far. But look, the fact of the matter from what I've seen is that the popular disparagement of the MBTI and of typology in general. Um, and the lack of real inquiry that often goes into, not all the time, but often will go into a lot of these articles, the hyperbole that's used to malign it, like saying it's complete garbage. <laughs> you know, this clearly indicates that there is something other than objective inquiry that is going on here. Um, there's some personal investment go going on. Like, for instance... When, Pl when people decided, you know what, Pluto's not technically a planet, it's actually just one of these large asteroids, no one really got up in arms about that. No one was making videos on YouTube declaring how horrible this was. Because whether or not Pluto is a planet or not has no effect on anybody. If people were getting mad about it, it was because this represented something about the scientific community. Um, and people feeling like, the scientific community should be focusing their efforts elsewhere, or some things like that. I'm just using that as an example to show that, unlike that, here, in typology, people are very invested, um, and people, people are getting angry, and that means something. It seems to indicate there's something else going on here. Let me skip forward a little bit. Uh, 
here because there, there's a story in the script. Um, this is sort of an example of what I'm talking about because this is just this is sort of how I see it. And if you don't you don't see this contrast because all of this stuff is taking place on the internet, like the the videos that have been made and sort of the polemics that have been made are always made one sided, but technically and in reality it can't be one sided it's always it's always reciprocal because you're referring to somebody who likes this stuff so let's just cut out the internet as the middleman and say let's say you've got someone like my dad my dad is actually skeptical about the mbti but there's one thing he's not skeptical about and that's when he read the his intp he he had to take it for work he read the intp description and it was like <clears throat> um and just so you know, anyway, if you don't know my dad, he's a computer programmer. He doesn't, he, he's not one to, I don't know, he, he's not one that that's the kind of thing that happens for him. He, he's actually very resistant to getting these kinds of, his mind blown. It was like to a pseudo-religious degree, which I'll get to later in the video, that's... Anyway, uh, INTJ would probably have a field day with that. Anyway, so the point was that he read his description as INTP, and he's like, this... He'd never heard anything describe it so succinctly before. It made him better known to himself. Now, if my father is recounting this experience, which he somehow sometimes has, where he's been like, you know, the MBTI, I remember taking that test, and it was like, whoa, like... <clears throat> Like, um, it was like amazing reading that description. I mean, it hit so many things. I was able to look around. I could see that, okay, that's why I do this and these people don't do that. We all know that feeling. Um, you're not all of us, but a lot of us uh, have kind of had that when we've, for whatever reason. Um, now, let's say that he's sort of innocuously telling this uh, story at, like, say, a party. And somebody walks up to him. Imagine that it's one of the people who've written the articles uh, um, as polemics or the researchers walk up to him while he's saying this and, and say what's in their articles to his face right there and say that the MBTI is completely meaningless um, or as INTJ implies, <laughs> I'll get to this in a moment and I shouldn't be laughing because I'm trying to, uh, that it is the creation of a satanic cult worshiper, namely Young, and that you have been infected by and are buying into the ideas of a madman and his, his devil named Philemon. And I'm sorry, this is in fact what INTJ says, I'll get into it. Um, you say that to the person's face, what are you implying, especially when it's my dad? What are you implying? Even if, you know, cut out the whole thing about Philemon. I'll get into that at the end of this video. Now, of course, you're all, you all don't care about what I'm saying right now. You're like, what the, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> but, um, uh, uh, if all you're saying is that this is completely meaningless, that's rather insulting, especially when someone's just been telling you in sort of an innocuous manner, yeah, it was a really great test. Because you're saying that your experience is the result of you being had, that you're a sap. And um, there's hundreds of thousands of people, that, not just that you're sap, by the way, but that you, you've been completely taken in, and I haven't been taken in. So you should listen to me. I don't know, that's... People aren't necessarily saying that, but that's just how it feels, and obviously I'm biased. But you got thousands, way more than that, but lots and lots of people who have millions, I think even, who've had these experiences, and you're making this video where you're literally saying that they are all saps, regardless of who they are, or what specifically their experience has been. Um, it's just... There, I don't know, I feel like there's something unconscious going on here that there's resentment being expressed because the person who's saying this wants to feel like they're smarter than all these people. Like I said, this isn't really a very good argument. It's, but it's just how it feels. I don't see how it could be otherwise because I, I haven't 
tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I haven't made videos where I've been striving to say that such and such um, an entire ideology is complete nonsense um, because that would imply that everybody involved in that, no matter who they are, because in my mind it's like, if I'm going to say that, I've got to walk up to every single one of those people and check them out and check to see. So I'm always trying, I don't know, I don't do a very good job, but I'm always trying to be careful about what I say. Um, I've got enough topic and this probably isn't making complete sense, but it, it's it's understandable that you'd be frustrated and, and resentful, but I don't know. And a lot of the, um, like in INTJ's video, uh, and it's not surprising, what he mainly criticizes is the typology community. And basically there's a lot in there that is actually rather insulting without even directly trying to be, just because it's immediately implying that um, and I know that he has a problem with me because he mentions me in the video in connection <laughs> with... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I... Ah, gosh dang it. In connection with Philemon. <laughs> with this demon. <laughs> Which is not a... I, I, I'll get to that. Sorry, I keep saying I'll get to that. I know he has a problem with me. Um, but where was that? What was I even talking about? the comments are directed towards the typology community. They're not directed towards the ideas, which is not a surprise, because one of the main arguments that people make is that the ideas are not consistent. So of course they're not going to talk about the ideas, because in their mind, well, you're all supposed to be part of this cohesive group. And it's like, no, we're not. I ever, like practically everybody who starts a channel is like, here's what makes my version of it different. And you can come in and see whether or not this is hitting home run. You can like it or not, but you can't, you, you'd have to go to every channel individually. Um, it's not even, you can't, I don't even think you can really say it's a typology community. Um, so the result of this is that, what that means is that none of these criticisms, they're, they're always treating the criticism as though it's criticism of the ideas. But it's, they never mention the ideas. So it's criticism of the community. So basically, what this boils down to is the critique of the MBTI and stuff, as far as I can tell, is basically people not liking members of the community because they bug them, or because they get irritated because they, they probably legitimately, because I'm sure I'm, there's plenty of people in the community who are very annoying, and many people in the community admit this freely, actually are trying to change that, because it's not really a community, it's just, well, I guess it is, but... Anyway, I've gone off the rails there. Um, I need to get back on topic because this is getting long and I don't know. Um, I, I could definitely be... Um, I could just restrict myself to just saying what I have in the script here and not kind of going off book, but I don't feel like that would be honest because, uh, I don't know, this, this is kind of how I really feel about it. And, you know, if I come off as I'm as though I'm just not all that professional and I'm just a young guy, which I am, um, then that would be more honest than me kind of trying to portray myself as though I um, even just unconsciously or unintentionally portray myself as though I'm, I'm uh, I don't know, because um, I'm more objective than I am. I have my biases and weaknesses and stuff, but I don't know. Um, just one more point on this topic, and then I'm going to move on to the next one, is that, you know, there's a lot of complaint that, okay, if there's all these tons of different people, and they're all talking about um, the same thing, but in somewhat different ways, this is often used to say that it's all completely nonsense, because there's no consistency in, in what's being talked about. Which is about the same as saying that um, because everybody disagrees on the nature of God, there therefore isn't a God. Which is not a... I'm not saying anything about the people who make this argument, but that's not a very good argument because actually it would seem to be the opposite is true. If everybody's talking about a thing, but they're all insisting on slightly different accounts of it, that means that they did not coordinate their accounts before. 
which means that they're all seeing something, but they're all disagreeing about its nature, which is actually how most things in nature happen. So the fact that there is a typology community, and that the typology community is not in unison about what all of these things mean, but they all insist uh, on their existence and on the fact that they see them and they see things, and people come on my channel and they, they say, um, you did a great job of describing this, and I'm like, oh, gee, thanks. That in itself means whether or not we're actually right, it means that we're both looking at something and the thing has properties that we are both seeing and are coordinating on without previously doing so. And these are very complicated concepts that we're coming into alignment on. So that would seem to indicate that there's something going on here. There's something actually there and it's just a matter of figuring out what it is. And by the way, I'm acting as though it's like a complete mess and it isn't. There's actually a fair amount of agreement on these things. Um, a lot of the disagreement has been on particulars. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm just kind of bracketing it for the sake of argument because I don't even think that it needs to have as much agreement as the community does um, tend to have uh, in order to make a cogent argument here. But I don't know. I'm getting off track again. And kind of in line, I think, ironically, with INTJ's video, um, I don't know, I, I'm trying not to critique just the style of the video itself, because that doesn't have to do with the ideas, but uh, it'd be very easy for me to, let me just put it that way, it would be very easy for me to um, critique just sort of the style or to make fun of the guy or whatever, because he gets angry and he's... he's um, uh, a bit sensationalist, but I don't want people doing that to how I present myself because uh, I'm, I've am i gotten a little bit angry in this video and it's like, uh, so it needs to be fair, but, um, but I don't know. Um, what I was going to say is just that, in my opinion, the video kind of, he starts, because he starts out with the objection against it not being scientifically valid, which is kind of like the most common and most often heard critique, and then from there he kind of descends more and more into, I feel like, a more subjective and ad hominem realm until finally he ends up with um, uh, his wonderful rant about Jan. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not portraying myself very well that I keep on just laughing because it's not... I ought to be just saying things. I shouldn't be laughing because laughing is not an argument. Um, it's not... Anyway, the second point that he makes is I believe the typology corrupts people. There's several ways, and I, I don't believe this covers all of them because he makes a lot of points, and, and it's... To me, anyway, it was a bit muddled. By all means, watch the video. You can parse them out better. Let me know if I did a good job or not. But the three main things that I picked out is that A, which is also, I think, the most important point, 